Today we are going to make Louvier cars and basically we are making an air driven car by a propeller driven by a rubber band and this will all be made out of paper, file folders, paper clips, couple rubber bands and some masking tape. We'll also add in some paper clips for our drive shaft and our axles and some drinking straws to create the shafts for those, the movement of that. So here is our Louvier car, and we are going to do our best today to show you how to do that. So you'll need a file folder, a ruler, a pen to do measuring and marking, a couple of drinking straws, a pencil. I find that these cocktail cups, plastic cocktail cups, are great to measure the back wheels and the front wheels. We we'll also need some masking tape, a couple of small paper clips, a couple of large paper clips, a couple rubber bands, a bead. You'll need scissors to cut and some pliers to manipulate the paper clips. Let's make the body tube. And the way we make the body tube is we take a standard sheet of Xerox paper, a pencil, and what we're going to do is we're going to wrap the Xerox paper as tightly as we can around the pencil and the tighter you can make the tube the stronger your tube will be and we are doing this the length of the Xerox paper so we are trying to make it as long as possible that will accommodate the length of the rubber bands later when we attach them for the propeller and what I'm going to do is I have pre-cut some tape over here on the side of my table and we are going to put one piece in the middle and then we're going to put one piece at each end and we'll put a piece at this end and then we are going to put a piece in between the end and the middle and then one last piece between the end and the middle on the other side. And here is our body tube. Now we don't want the weight of the pencil in the middle, so we're going to go ahead and push that out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a small paper clip and we're going to poke the middle out and create a 30 degree angle, about a 30 degree angle, we can adjust it later as necessary. And we're going to take that, the little part of the um, paper clip and we're going to put it in between the layers of the paper of the tube. And what you want to do is tighten that paper clip right up to the end. And there we have our body tube. So that should suffice for the body tube for the Louvier car. Okay, using the drinking cup, we're going to um, draw out two large circles for the back tire and two smaller circles for the uh, front tires. And then using a ruler and a pen, we are going to create a rectangle. And that rectangle is 20.3 centimeters by 12.7 centimeters. And we're going to do that on the file folder. And that file folder will provide the wheels, the propeller, and the motor mount. Now as exciting as it might have been to watch me cut out the circles and the rectangle, I did that off camera. And so we have two large circles. Again, I measured those using the top of the cocktail plastic cup. Two smaller circles for the front wheels. I used the bottom of that same cup. I measured a rectangle that's 20.3 centimeters by 12.7 centimeters. It's very important that you're wheels are round. Students just can't seem to figure out that if they have flat edges to their wheels that their wheels are not going to roll. So make sure that you emphasize that the wheels are as precise as possible when you are cutting them. Besides cutting the wheels, the next most difficult part to this procedure is the motor mount. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take that rectangle we cut out earlier and we're actually going to cut that in to two 
other rectangles and one rectangle is going to be 10.2 centimeters by the current width we kept which was the 12.7 and that 10.2 will give us the necessary definitions dimensions we need for the motor mount. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and draw our line for that. And we now have a rectangle. And I take my scissors and again try to be as precise as possible in your cutting. And we want to cut that into a rectangle. Now what we're going to do with this 10.2 centimeter rectangle, we're going to fold this in half and be as accurate as possible and I like to take and use my ruler to flatten out the seams it just makes it a cleaner seam and it makes it easier to work with and now I'm going to fold that in half again now when I fold that in half again again I want to be as uh, accurate as I possibly can so when I get that fold I'm going to again use my ruler to get a nice flat fold now, I'm going to measure four millimeters from that fold. So four millimeters from each side of the fold. And I'm gonna do that on both sides of the piece that I'm forming into my motor mount. And the four millimeters uh, helps to give us the fold and will give us a groove we can use to um, place the straw for our motor mount for the drive shaft for the propeller. So what I now do is I take my ruler and at those four millimeter marks I'm going to fold back part of that rectangle. And when I fold that back I'm going to get a nice tight fold and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Again, I line my ruler up at those four millimeter marks and I fold back the um, rectangle. Now what I want is, I don't know how well you can see it, but you now have a groove at the top and that is perfect for the straw to fit into and in fitting the straw in that groove you'll be able to run the propeller shaft through that straw. So you want to get a nice M. Now the measurements to get the correct angle of your motor mount is you want to start at the front edge fold and you're going to measure actually let's do that we're going to measure the back fold and we're going to measure a nine millimeter mark and then from the front edge fold from the front edge fold we're going to draw a line from the corner of that fold to that nine millimeter mark. And then with the scissors, I'm going to cut both sides of that rectangle at that nine millimeter mark. And what this gives us is a slope. And that slope is the slope that will give us the proper slope for the motor mount to go downward toward the front of the car. Now I'm also going to take off 9 millimeters off of the back of that fold. So again, we cut that 9 millimeters and we're going to go to the back of the, the motor mount. We're going to cut 9 millimeters off the back. Same thing, we draw a line from the corner and we're going to line that up. And again, we're going to cut a angled line like so and what we want to do is get a nice slope to our motor mount and that slope for our motor mount will give us the proper slope again we're trying to put a, uh, a straw in there that will go downwards towards the front of the car and that's what these nine millimeter cuts let us take out so I'm going to just trim this up and make it a little tighter, a little neater um, when you cut four pieces at once you don't always get a perfect cut so now it's so what we have here is the motor mount notice there's a downward slope and that downward slope is so the propeller shaft will be in the proper position
Now we're going to take that rectangle that we cut out earlier. Remember it was 20.3 centimeters by 12.7 centimeters. And what I've done here is I've drawn a line at 10.2 centimeters. And I'm going to go ahead and cut that. And half of this will be used later to make one style of propeller. I'm going to actually sh going to show you how to make a pinwheel propeller. But uh, you can also do a standard propeller using that rectangle. And uh, the motor mount is one of the more time consuming and sometimes difficult to follow for some of our students. But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fold that in half lengthwise. And then we're going to fold it in half again. And what we're trying to do is get a nice tight folded rectangle. Um, and this is going to be used to create the motor mount. Now at that seam fold that we just created, I'm going to make marks at four millimeters on both sides. And so I'm going to create a four millimeter mark here, a four millimeter mark here. And I'm going to turn that over again. Remember I'm making these four millimeter marks at the folded edge. And we're going to do that on both sides. And these four millimeter marks are the marks for us to fold back from. So I'm going to line up my ruler like so, and I'm going to pull that fold back. And in pulling that fold back, I get a nice tight fold on that. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And what you're trying to do is basically create a tall, skinny M. Um, you'll notice here there's a see the M tall skinny M and this is going to be for the motor mount and what you'll find is cut a 10 centimeter straw drinking straw and that 10 centimeter drinking straw will sit right there on that groove at the top that you've created again four millimeter folds at the top to create that groove now if you leave it as a rectangle, it's straight, and you'll get a straight um, run of your propeller. And unfortunately, that straight run of the propeller won't drive the car. And what we need to do is we need to create an angle. So not the folded edge, but the loose edge, you're going to measure 9 millimeters from the bottom. And 9 millimeters from the bottom. And we're going to draw a line from the folded corner to that nine millimeter mark and then go ahead and line up your edges and we're going to cut a nine millimeter line like so and what that now gives us is it gives us a nice downward slope for our motor mount and what we're also going to do is to maintain that from that nine millimeter edge that we took off we're also going to measure another nine millimeters off the back and we're going to go ahead and measure nine millimeters and I'm going to draw that line again, the line for cutting from the corner edge to that nine millimeter mark so like so and we're going to go ahead and take our scissors and we're going to go ahead and cut off that nine millimeter edge off the back and what this gives us is a nice angled slope to our motor mount. You'll notice when I put the, the straw, that 10 centimeter straw on it, I have a nice downward slope. And that's the slope that gives us that slope of the rubber band to the front of the car, which will allow the propeller to drive the car. So let's go ahead and finish with our motor mount. Now what I want to do is I want to add that motor mount to the body tube. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line that up on the back. And remember, you can always adjust the paper clip at the, the front later. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some tape. And I like to have a couple pieces of tape here handy on the edge of the table. It's easier to work with if you have some pre-cut. And I'll have, you know, about two inch lengths. And then I'll have a couple, maybe four to six inch lengths that I will eventually be using. And they don't have to be exact, but um, it um, will be necessary to use several um, because we wanna make sure that the motor mount is sturdy enough to deal with the torque created by 
the drinking straw and the propeller and the rubber band. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and line up that motor mount, take a piece of tape, and I'm going to start it in position. Now notice that I have half of the tube below the edge of the motor mount, and that's because I want to create as much connection point as possible for the tape. Now, what will happen is the strength of the rubber band and the weakness of the masking tape um, will allow that body tube or that motor mount to slip off. So in order to compensate for that, what I do is I take these longer pieces of tape and then I'll run them around the, edge, the front of the motor mount and bring it around the back and what I'm doing here is I'm creating a connection point so my motor mount can't slip down because when you start using the rubber band there's a lot of torque the tension starts pulling the motor mount down so by running that piece of tape all the way around the front edge and I'm going to double that up and in doubling that up hopefully I will gain enough support that the motor mount will not slip um, when we start tightening our rubber band later. So now I'll make sure that the paper clip at the front is lined up with the correct angle. And um, just for good measure, I'm going to add two more pieces of tape here in the back. Again, you're trying to create as much support without adding too much weight so that the motor mount will not move too much. Um, and lose energy. Um, the more stable the motor mount, the more energy can go into the drive shaft. Now what we'll do is I'm going to again cu cut a two, couple more pieces of tape and in cutting the pieces of tape, these are to attach the 10 centimeter length of drinking straw to the top of the motor mount and remember we created that groove. We're going to go ahead and place the drinking straw in that groove I want enough of this to hang off of the back that when my propeller spins it's not going to catch on the back of the motor mount. And we can always trim off the front later if necessary. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten that down with a couple pieces of tape. And when we tighten that down we want to make sure that the motor mount is secure and that the drinking straw is going to be stabilized. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tape and I'm going to run a piece of tape all the way around the entire system. And again, we are trying to create stability in the motor mount so that when we do start tightening up that propeller, we are not going to lose any of the movement of the propeller. Okay, so here is our body tube, paper clip at the front, motor mount attached in the back, and we've got the drinking straw at the proper angle. So now we are ready to begin work on our axles and wheels, and uh, we'll get started on that next. Okay, let's do our axles and wheels. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take a paper clip and I'm taking the large paper clip and you can use the pliers but what I've found is if you just use your thumb and kind of drag your thumb across the paper clip you can get paper clips pretty darn straight. Now the straighter the paper clip the better it will rotate inside the straws that are going to be used for the axle housings and so what you want to do is you're going to create a straight paper clip as straight as you possibly can. Again, you can use pliers to do this, but as I said, I find that you can get pretty straight just using your fingers and if you drag your thumb. Now, the, fir the, the front axle is six centimeters. And so what we're gonna do is once I have that paper clip pretty straight, I'm gonna go ahead and take my pliers and I take the pliers right to the end of the paper clip and I fold the paper clip against the plier so I get an L. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that L and I'm going to put it inside my plier. And then I'm going to pull the plier against the paper clip so that I get this shape at the end of my paper clip. So you should have an L at the end of the paper clip. And get that L as tight as you can, nice 90 degree angles. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and finish straightening out the paper clip. Now we're not going to need all of this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the paper clip through the axle. And uh, again, that's a six centimeter drinking straw forming the axle housing. And what we're going to do is at the other end, leaving room for play, notice I haven't put my wheels on the axles yet, I'm going to then take that and I'm going to give myself a 90 degree fold. And then I'm going to give myself a 90 degree fold. And again, we're creating L's. And in creating those L's, that's where the tires are going to be situated. And I'm going to go ahead and cut that off like so. So we should have an L on each side. Now, now what you're going to do is I've pre-centered my the holes in my wheels. And what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and run the wheel over that L. And you're going to do the same thing on the other side with the other wheel. And again, I've pre-poked a center hole. And you're going to go ahead and run that along the other side. And the whole point is to get your wheels as straight as possible. So you want to get a nice straight wheel. And what we're going to do is, again, I've pre-cut my tape. And by pre-cutting my tape, it's easier for me to grab and work with. And what I want to do is I want to get that tape over that L so that the wheel is nice and perpendicular to the axle. And if you run the tape over that L, there you go. And I'm going to put a second piece just to give us some balance. And tighten it down over the L so there's less chance of it slipping. And we're going to go ahead and do that on the other side. Same thing. We're going to take that wheel. We're going to take a piece of tape and run it over the L. And try not to get the tape off of the edge of the wheel because then that will create some friction that you don't want. So I'm going to cut off some of this tape. And again, we're going to go tight over that. And then we're going to put a second piece like so, making sure none of the tape. And so now we have a nice front wheel system. And again, the more perpendicular, the better it will roll. So let's try that again, and we want to get it to roll nicely. Okay, there we go. Okay, so the same thing is to be done for the back wheel. And again, take that paper clip and using your thumb, pull the paper clip out as straight as possible. And using your thumb, you can get a pretty straight run of your paper clips. And you want to do that to the best of your ability. Now, when you get to the end, you really don't have any leverage, so then you may want to use a plier to then get your straight lines. And again, we're going to start by grabbing the very end of the paper clip and bending once. And then we're going to grab the paper clip again and bend again so we get an L. And make sure our paper clip is straight. And then we're going to measure that off inside of the axle. And the axle in the back is a 10 centimeter tube. 10 centimeter tube. And we're going to go ahead and make our L there. And then using the plier, we're going to pull this up against the plier. And again, see we have the L. And I can cut that off like so. So I'm going to cut off a little more. I didn't cut it off quite enough. There we go. Once again, I've pre-cut my center holes on my wheels, and that just makes it easier. And this time I'm going to tape them first. I'm not going to put all both of them together. 
I'm going to go ahead and tape this first wheel on. And I'm going to go ahead and do this one. There we go. And then I'm going to put the second wheel on the other side. And through the pre punched hole. And using that tape, I'm going to go ahead and lock that down over the wheel. And I think I need one more piece of tape, so let's go ahead and cut that. And really try to push it down so you can see the imprint of the paper clip L on both sides. That way the tape will be locking down over the wheels. And again, let's see, we've got a nice roll here. Okay, so there's our rolling wheels. So that's our rear axle assembly and our front axle assembly. Now we want to add our axles to the body tube. So what we're going to do is we're going to take and place a piece of tape in the center of the axle, like so. And then we're going to line up the axle. Now I find if we line up the axle right at the end of that small paper clip at the front, that's pretty much the best position for that front axle. And you want to make it as perpendicular as possible. And this is another place where students get stuck because they uh, can't get the axle perpendicular. And what you want to do is kind of create some tension in your tape. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take a piece of tape and tighten it around the back part of that tape. And we're going to do the same thing in the front. Now the front's a little trickier because you got the paper clip there. But you can manipulate it a little bit. And so what we have there is we have a nice line for our front axle. And then you're going to put your back axle at the front of the motor mount. And again, you're going to do the same thing. Run your piece of tape in the middle of your axle, like so. And then you're going to line that up at the front of the and again, what you're trying to do is you're going to try to put that back axle right there at the front of the motor mount. And, you know, you have to manipulate the tape a little bit. It's not going to go perfectly where you want it all the time. And we're going to go ahead and put some tape there. And I'm going to add some tape in the back. And actually my axle is a little unbalanced, so we're going to slide it over a little bit and tighten it up again. So now we should have a nice rolling Louvier car. Okay. And again, the straighter the axles, the more perpendicular, the more vertical your wheels are to the ground, the better your car will roll. Now that other half of the rectangle that we made the motor mount from, what we're going to do is we're going to measure 5.2 and draw a rectangle and then using the edge of the drinking cup notice the shape I have created there on each end and in the middle and this will be our propeller. Okay once again I did my amazing cutting off camera and this is the propeller that we will be using. Okay, so let's put our propeller on our car. So what I've done here is I've already taken and straightened a paper clip and I've folded the L just like we did for the axles. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and run that through the center of the propeller which I have pre-punched and then using the tape 
I'm going to go ahead and put a couple pieces of tape to lock that in position. Again, that L and the tape should lock down over each other so that you get a nice tight fit and the L indentation should be tight so that you know that the propeller will not will not be slipping. And what you're going to do is you're going to take that propeller and you're going to fold one edge like so and you're going to fold the upper edge on the other side like so so that you get this type of shape to your propeller. Now I have a bead here and I put the bead on the paper clip and run it through the drinking straw because that bead will help to reduce the friction and will just help with the spinning when you tighten up your rubber bands to the drive shaft. Now what I'm going to do is down here I'm going to bend slightly down and then I'm going to take that propeller shaft and I'm going to tweak it into a hook and there's my hook for my drive shaft. Now I'm going to take two rubber bands and interlocking them like we did when we were kids and I'm going to go ahead and put that rubber band on this hook and I'm going to go ahead and run it down to the paper clip we had at the beginning and there we have a completed Louvier car. And I'm going to go ahead and just do a short test and again we have to reverse the propeller so we make sure that the propeller will catch air and we're going to go ahead and spin that as tight as we can and the whole point hopefully that motor mount will stay in position and as I tighten up the propeller let's see how much torque we can get on this thing and away we go. Well that's a nice beginning test but we can run it further later. But there is your completed Louvier car.